This video is about the quotient rule for derivatives. For our notes, we'll just dive right in with the rule. If f and g are differentiable, then the derivative of a quotient of functions, f of x over g of x, is kind of like the product rule, more complicated than we would like. It'd be nice if it was just the derivative of the numerator over the derivative of the denominator, but it's not. Now, the notation to represent this rule can be a little clunky, but I'm going to read through it and then show you a shortcut way of, of remembering the rule. The rule states this. The derivative of this quotient is, in the numerator, the denominator function g of x times the derivative of the numerator function f of x minus the numerator function f of x times the derivative of the denominator function g of x all over the denominator function g of x squared. So, as I mentioned, the notation can get a little uh, easy to trip over here. So there's another convenient way. This is not a formal way to write the rule, but I think it's useful. And that is, if you think of the original functions f of x as the high function and g of x as the low function, again, those words aren't even spelled formally, but it's just a quick way to understand the notation, then the, this formula is really low d high minus high d low all over low squared. So that that's hardly uh, formal, but it helps, rem it's an easy way to remember it. It's low d high minus high d low over low squared. It just really simplifies the formality of the formula in a way that's helpful. Let's try an example where we want to differentiate the following function. It's g of x equals, and then it's a rational function where the numerator is x squared minus 2, and the denominator is 2x plus 1. Given the rules we've already discussed for derivatives, this does not conveniently fit into a previously known form or rule. So this is actually a good opportunity to practice and use our quotient rule. Notice we have a quotient with a numerator and a denominator that could be kind of split up into separate functions. So let's go ahead and try to utilize our rule by saying g prime of x equals, and then if we use the shortcut notation we just wrote, we could say low d high. Well, low is 2x plus 1 times d high, well the high is the numerator, the derivative of the numerator x squared minus 2 would just be 2x, so there's low d high minus, now we want high, well that's x squared minus 2, the numerator, d low, well the low is the 2x plus 1 denominator, the derivative of that would just be 2, and that's all over the denominator squared, which is 2x plus 1 squared. Let's take this another step further and perhaps distribute the 2x in the numerator, first part of the numerator here, which would give us a 4x squared and then plus 2x minus. Now be careful with this second part. Really there's a minus sign that you could kind of put with this 2 that we're about to distribute here. So let's consider this a minus 2 that's going to get distributed in. That would become a minus 2x squared, and then really a plus, if you distribute the minus 2 to the negative 2, it would be a plus 4 for our numerator, and that's all over this denominator, which we could just leave as 2x plus 1 squared. Now, if there was a way to expand the denominator or factor the numerator and then cancel or reduce things, yes, we should do it. But let's just go ahead and combine some terms to simplify the numerator one more step. Combining these x squared terms would give us a 2x squared in the numerator, and then we have the plus 2x still there, and then a plus 4, and that's all over the denominator, which is 2x plus 1 squared. So if there was, if there was a way to factor the numerator and cancel something, of course we should do it, but in this case that does not appear likely. Let's try a second example. This one is given as y equals the numerator of this function is square root of x over the denominator, which is 2 plus x. 
So again, this is a setup um, possibly as a quotient function. Let's go ahead and try to apply the quotient rule for the derivative and say y prime equals, we're going to use the shorthand, the shorthand notation of it that we wrote above, which is low, okay, that's 2 plus x, d high. Now, the high is this square root of x. That we've already seen a couple times. If you take the derivative of it, it's really x to the 1 half. So that could be written in summary as 1 over 2 square root of x. That's a way to summarize the derivative of the square root of x. If you want to write that out on the side to be sure about that using the power rule, that's fine. But that's the summary of it. So there's low d high minus high, which is square root of x, d low. Now the low is just 2 plus x, so the d of it, or the derivative of it, would be just 1. And then this is all over low squared, which is 2 plus x squared. Now it's typically not uh, good to leave a complex fraction in our answer, so that we may have a step or two more to go here. Let's consider this large numerator as a part of a complex fraction here, and get a common denominator for those terms, which would be probably the denominator we already have there, the 2 root x. So if I were to multiply the second term up there by 2 root x over 2 root x in order to get a common denominator for this whole numerator set of terms here, then let's rewrite this whole thing as y prime equals. And then in this large numerator now, we really would have 2 plus x and then minus 2x if you multiply the root 2 root x times the root x up here. Uh, we'd have just 2x. That's all over the common denominator we had put there, which is the 2 root x. But then, this is still all over this 2 plus x squared. And so, again, to simplify this complex fraction, we could write this combining like terms along the way as 2 minus x, that's combining all these three terms in this numerator, over... Um, multiplying this bottom denominator up with this one would be a way to simplify the complex fraction. That would give us a 2 root x times a 2 plus x all squared. And given that that's, it's no longer a complex fraction and we have all positive exponents involved, let's just leave it right there for our answer. Let's try a third example. This one reads f of x equals, and the numerator of our function is 4 plus x. The denominator is x times e to the x, and of course we want to find this derivative. So we'll get started recognizing that this is, most generally speaking, a quotient where we have a numerator as 4 plus x, and we have this denominator as x times e to the x. So if we go ahead and start to apply the quotient rule, we'll say low, which is x e to the x, d high, which is just 1, uh, the derivative of 4 plus x would be just 1. There's low d high minus high, which is 4 plus x, d low. But here's where it gets interesting. The low, or the denominator in other words, of this function is actually a product of two variable factors. So we're going to have to turn that derivative into a product rule derivative. Okay, so there's low is going to get uh, kind of spread out using the product rule. We'll just note that about what's happening here. So if we take just the x e to the x, apply the product rule, that'd be first, which is x, times derivative of the second, which is just e to the x. Okay, the second is e to the x, but as we've said already, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So here's first, d second, plus second, which is e to the x, d first, well, the derivative of x is just 1. Now remember, we are actually in the midst of the quotient rule here. We just had to jump aside and do the product rule as part of the quotient rule, but we're still in the quotient rule where we've done low d high minus high d low. Okay, d low is what we just did with the product, with the product rule, but that's all over low squared, which would be x e to the x squared. Now let's make an attempt to simplify our answer a little bit. So after using the product rule, of course, it got more complicated with more terms. Let's go ahead and rewrite this all again. Uh, we'll say this is f prime of x 
equals, now in the beginning of the numerator we've, we've come up with here, we just have x e to the x times 1. Well, that's just x e to the x. We'll leave that alone. But then in the second part, we ended up with, remember this one came from the product rule. Let's go ahead and FOIL that out, but be careful. If there's a negative sign in front, we got to keep that negative and put everything after it in some kind of bracket if we're going to FOIL this stuff together. And when I say FOIL, I'm talking about these two terms, the 4 plus x times these two terms from the product rule, the x e to the x plus e to the x. Okay, if we go ahead and FOIL those together, first times first would be 4 x e to the x. Outer times outer would be plus 4 e to the x. Inner times inner would be plus x squared e to the x. And last times last would be plus x e to the x. And let's not forget that this is all over our denominator squared. And we can rewrite that or just keep it as is for now. So we have x e to the x all squared. Now let's try to simplify maybe a little more. We could distribute this negative uh, in this previous step and see what that does for us. So let's rewrite this as x e to the x minus 4x e to the x minus 4 e to the x minus x squared e to the x minus x e to the x. And that's all over x e to the x squared. Now if you take a look at what we have, you'll notice in this numerator there's an x e to the x in the front and a negative x e to the x in the back. So those would just cancel out. And then notice that what's remaining in the numerator has a common factor. So if we were to take this further algebraically and notice that there's an e to the x in all these remaining numerator terms, and notice they're all negative, so let's, let's be thorough here. And if we factor out a negative e to the x from what's left in this numerator, we should end up with 4x plus 4. Remember, we're taking out a negative, so that changes the signs here. So there's a plus 4 in the middle there, and then really a plus x squared at the end. And that's all over what we have now, at this point, let's go ahead and the denominator here, which we've just been copying down here, and apply this power of 2 to both factors. Since these are multiplied together inside the x times the e to the x, we can just square both of them. This would become an x squared and then an e to the x squared, also known as e to the 2x. But if we see it this way, we can understand now that there is also a way to cancel some common factors here. In the numerator, we have this e to the x. In the denominator, we have two of them. So if we canceled it with one of them, we could say our final answer is negative. And then in the numerator, all these terms, which I'll now write in descending order here as uh, x squared plus 4x plus 4 in parentheses. And that's all over. Now at the bottom, we just have x squared and then only one of the e to the x's because we canceled one of them with the numerator e to the x. So we could say this is okay for a final answer. Or if you notice that this numerator contains a perfect square, so I'll say here or, so that's fine, or you could factor it again and put the negative out front and recall that this numerator is really just an x plus 2 all squared over uh, x squared e to the x. Um, this would also be fine as well.